Hey guys, welcome to the shop on the cold, wet, windy first Sunday in March. Hey Colombo, you figuring this out? In California. And we are on a run now. You'll recall a couple of episodes ago, we did something called neck assembly line. Remember this? We blew out a bunch of these, got some neck boards, got some wider boards, cut some headstocks, did scarf joints, pinned them together, and we're just blowing them out just like that, remember? And then, let me get this out of the way and you'll hear it crash in the background. And then we took, in the next episode called setting a fingerboard, fingerboard fretboard, and we put uh, one of these on one of the necks we made and made sure that everything was level and kind of did all that. Get that out of there. And we ended up with this. And um, that's a pretty fingerboard. Anyway, now we're going to move on to the next step, which is the shoulder board or the second board on our neck. Usually ends up out here somewhere. It comes through the body and exits out into the tailpiece for those of us that do tailpieces. Um, ends inside of the box for those that don't. But anyway, you use one of these whether you've got uh, a cigar box, a coffee can, or a license plate. Um, but there are reasons why you do this. The main one is structure, especially if you're using big thumper strings like people playing finger style, thump, 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 and then using their other fingers for the lower strings. If you've got a big string on here, this is really important structurally. Um, um, but also, it, it just looks good and um, strength, strengthens rented lips, strengthens up your guitar. So, kind of ends up looking like this. Of course, we got our dowels. I'm going to show you how to do that again. But kind of like this. So, we're going to put on a shoulder board today. Um, now, the background music. Mississippi Fred McDowell, it's a good old album. I do not play no rock and roll, Mississippi Fred McDowell. I do not play no rock and roll. If you can get the vinyl, do that. Uh, if you can't, uh, get uh, the CD or, or do a download, and I'll give you a link to that below. While you're down below there, you know you wanna like this video. You already know that, so just like it right now, just boom. Uh, if you don't like it, really, think about that. Anyway, subscribe uh, and click that notification button. You don't want to miss any of this. So let's do our shoulder board. We can only do that if we hit the bench. There it is. I got it playing. See that? There's something special about a cheap turntable. Let's sit this over here in that area. There we go. Ooh, time to zoom in. What do I got hiding in? The area of wonder, the do not covet area today. Okay, first off, you're gonna hate life. Do not covet my Tony Basil. Hey, Mickey. Hey, Ricky. Yeah, don't covet that pin. Hey, Mickey. And then I got, ooh, look at that. That is a Fender emblem off of a 1960 something Mustang. That's original cotton don't even look at my pencils okay um what else we got here oh illuminati confirmed illuminati confirmed and coahoma mississippi who was born in that county um bubble bubbles bubble i don't know um that number i'm so confused about that number 405 it it looks good it looks good but i have to drive on that freeway every day it's the worst freeway in the united states to drive on and i drive it every day um so covet covet okay coveting over all right here we are at the bench and um the last time you saw um this neck and fingerboard this part was still up to here and i've cut this down a little bit and uh, I had a question the other day from one of my viewers as to why it seems that my um, fingerboard is up so high off the neck because some people just do 
flybys with a helicopter, hear that, in the middle of one of my episodes without regard to anything else going on in the world. Thank you so much for that. Anyway, people are asking me, why do your um, fingerboards sit up so high off of uh, the box or whatever and the reason is is because I use these remember these floating bridges um, there's an episode gonna pop up right about there right about now that kind of sheds more light on that but I end up taking off this part below and just using these thumb screws here and then I'll mount this back here somewhere like so all right now I have to admit something we're gonna go down a rabbit hole right here but you see when I cut this down I use this on a router and the problem is is if you put the fingerboard on first and forget to route this out um, what ends up happening is this is actually sitting let me get this like this on the router table like this and this is over here and there's nothing over here to counterbalance this so you're kind of wobbling and trying to run the line and and do whatever you do and it doesn't work out so I've developed a little trick just in case this happens and you should have one of these around let me show you what this is okay so problem is I glued the fingerboard here there's no fingerboard here I need to use a, a router table to get this down this is flopping around so first thing I want to do is find a piece of fingerboard like this next thing I want to do is I want to take and find the middle of the fingerboard both the piece both this way and this way I want to mark that I want to take a small bit and drill a hole through there then I want to take a countersink tool and countersink the hole because what I'm going to end up with is I'm going to end up with this piece of fingerboard with a screw on it now the reason I countersunk it is when I attach this down to the other end of the neck like so when I screw this down it can't be sticking up over this it's got to be smooth with this so when I put this on here suddenly you see here I've got the other side of that and my fingerboard doesn't bounce around on the router table I hope you caught that it's a couple second fix again small piece of fingerboard same thickness as all of your fingerboards hole drilled countersunk screw now of course your neck board should always be longer than it has to be at the end just in case you need to do something like that anyway let's get out of this rabbit hole and get back to reality now at the beginning of this episode i talked about a couple reasons we need a board that looks like this in this area and one of them was structure um if you look at the thickness of this board now that I've run it through the router, because here's what's happening. i got to take off this plate. This board is going to sit right down in here. Of course, this is a little kit. See that? I'm going to have to cut uh, this off. I'll glue all this together. And this neck will sit down in here. But that is not very thick if you're going to be putting, especially a big 56 or 60 um, thumper string on these things so you really need to strengthen this up okay um, why don't we run this all the way to the end I guess you could and then you could uh, take a router and round the edges off but um, I tend to put mine just past the 14th fret now why do I want to so I'm going to count this so always do this a couple times so you know one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve there's my 12th fret 13 14 so let me for reference put a little piece of tape right there okay I'm going to mark this out a little bit later but why do I want that there well I'm known number one to usually put a some kind of buffalo nickel right there um, and when I'm when I'm playing this thing everybody knows that blues 12th and 14th fret is good so when you got your fancy blue slide do not covet my blue slide you're sliding down to the 12th and 14th fret you really don't want that big lumpy thing sitting there and you also don't want it to stu uh, just stub up like this you don't want it to look like that so you needed to transition 
like that okay you with me but that's why I put it just past starting between the 12th the end of the 12th and the beginning or the 14th and the beginning of the 15th so one more time 12 13 14 this drop down right here starts in the middle between the 14th and 15th fret and then goes all the way through the body you with me I hope so because I'm not with myself okay guys uh, I showed you before this was um, one end of this was closed it was gonna be for I guess a neck that stopped here my necks always go all the way through and there's a tail piece here so this is just a little mock-up piece of wood here that we're using but the way these work is you see that there's holes here and this is double thickness so I'm going to take some tight bond and I'm going to put the four dowels in that go here uh, and the other places and flip this over and glue all this up. It's really important we get that together. So I'm going to do that. You don't really don't need to watch me. All right, wipe off a little excess glue. Now I'm going to take my four clamps and get these clamped down like so. All right, I don't want to turn this into a license plate guitar kit lesson because what do you know? I think there's one right up there right about now. I'm burning through these eye cards quick. I only got five of them, but hey, if they help you out and we run out of numbers at the end that's okay um but i want to remember that when i did the layout on the last um talking about mounting the fingerboard i talked about a lot about knowing where everything's got to be knowing where the bridge is going to be knowing where 25 and a half is going to be uh knowing where your license plate is going to be and so we've ended up where we know that this bridge is going to be right about there can you see it in the camera right um, that there's about this much of this sticking over the plate like so and that gives me a plenty of room over here to do my typical tail piece which will have the metal and then we'll have the tape coming through and grounding things but the most important thing to remember is right now before we add on anything else that these this board sits slightly below um, where the plate is going to sit so there's no interference now we're going to add on another board right so let me get this out of here that's a little bit tight so it's going to look like this right so when we add that board onto here guess what we are going to have to chip some of this out to make sure that it sets down in here like so and doesn't stick up too far um, we're going to let this glue dry and then we're going to figure out along the way how to cut that board so it ends up between the 14th and 15th fret with this drop down we'll get that figured out here and figure out how far it has to go now that measurement of how far it has to go has everything to do with where this ends can you see that there and i want about two and a half inches past there Oh, the metricators are going to laugh if this isn't long enough. It is long enough. I'm going to turn this around 100 times till I figure it out. We're going to be at about 360 millimeters or... about 14 and a half inches. So we're going to go ahead and cut that out cut a piece of wood that's 360 millimeters and then cut it at a 45 and round this. All right, I've got a shorter piece of neck board. I've told you in episodes before I buy these in four foot and three foot sections. This will get me two shoulder boards. I have taken, taken my jigsaw or my 
my scarf joint jig off of my table saw or my chop saw. I'm going to pull this back a little bit so it's not vibrating the camera. I have set this at a 45 degree angle and locked it down and now I'm just going to cut the end of this off at a 45. So I'm going to take and make sure that I get the full 45. If I do this too close, it won't do that. I'm supporting the back end, getting it past there. Real simple, 45 degree angle. All right, we're going to pull this out of here and set this off to dry. My bash and everything everywhere. And now I know that, remember we're at halfway between the 14th and 15th frat. I am going to take this side of the angle, see there, and I'm going to lay it right there like so and then I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to notch off the back of that board can you see it over there yeah um, notice I'm not going to try to do it here because when I cut this I'm going to end up cutting this part off I want to make sure that these are all cut together and glued together and flush so I'm going to take this back to the chop saw and cut that off so these are flush with each other all right, back from the chop saw and flush those up like that. That ends up right where we need it to be. Um, now, you'll notice I don't like that much. I need to round that off. You don't want something where everybody's sliding their thumbs hitting this and that. You need it to be rounded off and, and that's some belt sander work. So let's do that real quick. We're going we're gonna to round this off a little bit. Uh, make sure there's nothing sticking up on the ends uh, and then contour this good before we start figuring out how to attach that. Okay, now as usual, we'll make sure my belt sander is nice and clean with this, and then I'm just going to run this up and down and do the same kind of thing we did on the neck like this. Tilt this back and forth everywhere, and then round these corners off like this and like this. Make sure everything's nice and smooth. I'm going to uh, do this in separate clips so you don't have to listen to the noise. Okay guys, here we go. We got the loose piece of wood. It's rounded off nice. It'll work nice. Now, once this is all back together, uh, we're going to be able to sand these as a unit. We're going to need to do a little bit of that, but we want to make sure before we start putting stuff together here that there's no clumps or anything like that. Now, I'm going to take one of these ratchet clamps that I got right here. I'm going to walk around the camera without trying to knock it over, and I'm going to get these two end pieces lined up together like so and just clamp them I just don't want anything spinning around and then I'm gonna pull these over into each other I'm gonna clamp them somewhere down around in here because I need this area to work okay now I'm gonna end up with this configuration where I've got our dowels remember our dowels from the neck episode and the and the uh, fretboard and scarf joint. I'm going to put three of those in just like I did at the top of the uh, scarf joint. So remember my handy template. I keep telling you about this. Just take a piece of this wood, find the middle and halfway between the middle and the edge and make this. Works great for laying out strings on a three string or whatever. But I want to find where I want to put that first. I don't, I don't want to get too close to the edge here. 
more down the way and then I'm going to come up here a little bit and put the other two holes. So now I'm going to drill once I take my trusty awl and get a starter hole ready. Never want to be putting a drill bit on bare wood and then starting to do this and next thing you know it drifts all over the place. So got this clamp together. I'm going to drill my pilot holes and then I will use the bigger bit to put in reach in front of the camera. It's all right my grandma's not around to chew me out but we'll put three of these in. Then it'll be time to think about glue. All right, there we go. Might want to take a little file over here and do a little bit of that. Pull these clamps off. Nice thing is now that um, that these holes are in here, you know, I always want to do a little bit of this. There shouldn't be that much there, but if there is, I want to knock that down because if there's something sticking up here, your glue won't be right. Now all we're going to do is just like we did with the scarf joint. We're going to spread some glue along here, both sides here, and then squirt some down in these holes as well and drive these down in um, and clamp it up and let it set. Now we're going to get that board out of the way and we're going to put a little bit better clamp on here. Get away from them dowels. I'm going to watch the end of this now so it, watch that glue pop out of there. We're going to make play real, pay real close attention to this part and make sure that it's glued too because sometimes it wants to pop up. So I'm going to end up putting another clamp down here real close once I get the rest of it all clamped up. All right, you can see we've got the clamps on. You can see the glue oozing out of there so everything's nice and tight. You want to remember that the fretboard, piece of the fretboard is actually right in here. So I'm putting, I'm going to clamp this down. I want to make sure that I'm not clamping onto the bare fretboard or fingerboard. And then I've also, for the same reason, put um, this blue tape here. So I'm going to put that final clamp right there and tighten this down because remember the end of this shoulder board is going to try to pop up and you see that glue popping out of there that's a good sign that we're in shape so let's let this dry up now all right guys it is the next evening and it's time to start pulling clamps and uh, you always want to remember that when you start pulling these clamps off, it's probably best to um, put them away as you go, right? And you also want to remember the old oil field lefty loosey righty tidy. Remember that? Yeah, that means if you turn to the left. Um, it's going to loosen up. If you turn to the right, it's going to tighten up. And then you'll hear people say the other left or something like that, which is a more direct version of lefty loosey, righty tidy. So I'm going to get this done and hang these clamps up. Now, um, the fingerboard didn't get marred up that's good um, and these two remember the pegs we put in there there we go we're gonna sand this down a little bit but they come through up here there's another one below the neck the fingerboard fretboard that you don't see but I'm gonna take these right now 
and just carefully cut them off like so. Now, next part of this is we just need to take this to back to the belt sander and work down this and then we'll end up cutting this end off and and uh, making it the right length right there. there. There we go. Now you can see it, right? Okay, so belt sander work. All right, we got some more Fred McDowell going on in the background. I don't play no rock and roll, remember that. Um, I think you've seen me work the belt sander enough, so we're just going to take where this come together right here and make sure that everything's nice and smooth. Round this off a little bit like this. Uh, but the one thing I want to tell you about is you got to be safe because like now they got the junta virus and God knows what and everybody's running around and you got to protect your your lungs and stuff because this stuff right here will get to you all this dust so you want to protect yourself so I went ahead and got some of these dust masks made I got the fancy ones made specifically for my channel anyway if you can't afford to have your own logo and your own channel printed on there then I don't know tie a snot rag around your face or something but don't be breathing dust guys okay All right, guys, we're done on the belts, and we've got some fine work to do here, a little bit here and there. Uh, you know, I, I have to tell you, I feel so honored when someone, I mean, it's significant, right, when someone names a tool after you. Um, and I've had the recent discovery that a tool was named after me, namely the bastard file here. I want to give you another tip that's going to help you out. Remember, the belt cleaner well guess what the belt cleaner works on files too you got to keep your teeth clean on the file and don't think you can't use the belt cleaner on a file there's no rule it's not like the mattress police are going to come to your house and arrest you because you use this on this right okay so we're just going to take my friend and namesake the bastard file Check everything out here. Some stuff here you can't get done. On the belt sander, you're just going to go down here. You want to make sure that these edges are done. Most of this is going to be inside of a box, but this part right here, there's a lot of contact with hands and stuff right here, so you just want to kind of run down and do everything here. And then this is great for coming around this corner and smoothing out this heel like so now what I got to do now is um, I gotta unclamp this contraption here oh I'm so buff this is a good workout right here but we're gonna unclamp this and get this license plate frame figured out why we got to notch that out uh, because we added this and then cut to length but Guys, that's it. It's that simple. Okay, guys, so the moral of the story, it's pretty easy to take a couple of boards, make a neck, put a fret board on it, and then put a heel board underneath like this and end up with this. It's pretty good looking, and um, it's really easy to do. If you got some Mississippi Fred McDowell going on in the background once again, I do not play no rock and roll. Don't forget there's a link below. I want to close you out with something really important. I joke around a lot, but this ain't no joke. So I want you all to know, I've worked for loggers. I worked on the railroad. I threw chain in the, in the oil fields. I still got all my fingers. Isn't that a miracle? Yeah, I did my time with Bill Jackson, Reed Company, all that. And I tell people, I'm not going to get killed building a cigar box guitar or, or being in my office at work if I survived all the rest of that stuff is no joke safety first 
again, my channel, special made mask, protects my lungs, and always have the right heart hat. Listen to me, damn it. See you next time.